it is a pleasure to have you here participating in this first Journal Scientifica, and particularly in this topic that it is of so much interest for the School of Physics. So please, when you, whenever you feel ready, you can share just a slide. Oh, well, yeah, sure. Okay. So thank you, thank you, Melissa, for the introduction, and uh, thank you for, for the invitation. I am very happy here to, to talk about this uh, subject. That's a subject that I've been working for some time uh, in, um, uh, as, a, as a research topic. And uh, I'm, I hope that I can uh, uh, introduce in, in the proper way and answer your questions. Uh, so, uh, the, the, the outline of uh, this um, uh, seminar is I, I, I will try to give uh, an overview of uh, the computing in high energy physics, which is already something much bigger than uh, what, I, what I'm going to discuss, which is GPU in uh, high, -end, high energy physics. Then I will give a general introduction to, to GPU. Uh, and uh, sometimes we call it uh, 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 general purpose GPUs. Uh, here, I just, I'm just using uh, GPUs, but that's, uh, that depends on the way that, that, that you want to, to be specific or not. And uh, then I will uh, discuss the, the how the, uh, Ex, uh, high energy physics experiments are using GPUs. I would like to, to, to of course, to say that uh, since I'm, uh, I, I'm part of the LHCB experiment, it would be easier for me to discuss uh, LHCB uh, experimental details. So I will show some, some examples uh, as part of LHCB. I'm also or oriented uh, to LHC uh, experiments in general that I know more. And also the ideas I'm going to present uh, are from a physicist uh, uh, view. So uh, sometimes I don't go into details to the computing uh, just because I, I don't know the details, but I, well, uh, I, I'm trying to, to show as much as I as I can uh, concern this, uh, this, this talk. So let me go uh, for the computing, software and computing in high energy physics. So this is, um, uh, if you are interested on, on this uh, talk, there is a, a high energy physics software foundation that uh, is aiming to, to keep track and to, to, to help uh, and uh, the, 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 advance, the advances of, of, this, uh, of the software computing, these experiments. And uh, the point is why, why, do, why, do, why do that? Is that the fact that uh, a critical part of, of the physics uh, production in these experiments are are actually depending on software and computing. And I bet uh, not only offline, because usually you think about uh, you have the data already stored somewhere, and you have to use this data to, uh, to, to, to find uh, observable, uh, a physics observable to compare with, uh, with a theory. Uh, but also, you'll, uh, you, how you store this data? Uh, how to store the data is something that uh, it requires a lot of uh, investment on, on software and computing. Concerning LHC, uh, it, is, uh, it is clear that we have a big um, amount of, uh, of uh, uh, investment on that. For instance, in, in general, uh, in total, there is about 1 million CPU cores every hour of every day uh, being used uh, 
of uh, this experiment. Around uh, one, uh, a thousand uh, uh, petabyte, petabytes of data. In a per year, it's around 100 uh, petabytes. And uh, this is not to only mention the, the, the links that, that uh, need the, the, the up to 100 uh, gigabits uh, of, 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 of links that we need, which is a lot. And uh, if we do a calculation compare, comparing to, to commercial uh, development or commercial uh, software computing, uh, not, or they, not in this case the software, if we estimate around 50 uh, million of lines, uh, of C++, which uh, is more than half billion dollars. So it's a lot of investment, not only uh, on the hardware, but also on the software, which is uh, a huge amount of, um, of um, uh, person power and, uh, and uh, financial uh, investment on, on that. And there are, of course, uh, many challenges that we we are ahead of us that we we are we know of this challenge. We that's one of one of the challenges I'm going to to, to talk to you today. And uh, and I'll, there are many others that I I invite you to go to this uh, software foundation and uh, and look and and as, as you like. And in this talk, uh, as I said, I will focus on, on the GPU application and I'm more specific in the real-time analysis. So first, this is to give you a very uh, big overview how the hex high energy physics experiments are distributed both on uh, peak luminosity on the left <clears throat> and the center of mass energy on the right. So the, the x-axis is the year of which the experiment start running, started running. And, uh, and then you see on the y-axis what I said, the peak luminosity, which is uh, the, the, the amount of data basically of this, of this experiment and the, the and the energy that uh, this experiment uh, is, uh, is probing. Uh, so you see that uh, it is increasing, of course, with time, both peak luminosity and energy. And uh, there are challenges that uh, related to, to, uh, to, to both the, 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 the luminosity increase, which is uh, the amount of data is Going is becoming um, uh, higher. The, the, the rate that you need to, to save your data is increasing. And uh, when you go to higher energy, is also the, the, the multiplicity of, uh, of particles produced in an event is also increasing. So we have both the rate and the size of the event. So, so the event is more complex, you have more information to store. And then uh, you have to, to deal both with the, um, with the rate uh, of the computing and the, the, the size of the event. So these, these things, they have to match, they have to be combined in order to solve uh, the computing problems. And of course, so here you see that the dates are going up to 2050, which is uh, exper uh, experiments that are not uh, still, there is still to, to happen and uh, they are foreseen, they are planned. Uh, of course, it, it depends on the uh, on the situation uh, of the financial financial agencies in the future. Um, so I said I I I focus on real time and uh, what's real time analysis for a high energy physics experiment. So this is a big deal and uh, this is uh, not simple. And uh, you you have to, to do it uh, in a very different way to think about this than you do it in uh, offline or, or analysis when you already have the data on disk, on tape. 
And here I show uh, uh, a, a, an example of an LHCX experiment, as a, and this is of course using LHCB as an example. Uh, and what we, and I, I'm showing an example what what happened in the in the past, in the near past, uh, in the years of uh, 2016 to 2018, what we what we call run two. So this is a. Uh, uh, so the, we have a data that uh, is uh, at the rate of 40 megahertz. And it, since this, at, at this rate, we uh, by uh, at this time, we didn't have enough uh, resources or knowledge, so both software and hardware, to analyze this data, we apply what we call hardware trigger. So this is uh, signals from the, from the, the from the detector, from the detector, and uh, you take uh, from the sensors that you have in the detector, and then you combine these signals in, in, in your um, in your electronics, and then you apply already some cuts, some requirements that uh, you reduce the, the event rate from 40 to one. So of course, when you apply this, you are already uh, removing whatever you are not interested on, on analyzing. As you know, we want to analyze very rare events, and uh, to produce these rare events, you have to produce a lot of common events, a lot of events, I mean, regular events. And uh, so you, you, events that we already analyze and already understand. So what we do, we don't need to save all these events, but that's what we try to do in this trigger. So, at least, so this first level is doing that uh, in the in the hardware level, and then we go what we what we call software level, where we these events are then uh, 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 decoded in in a way that uh, you can use a software, uh, and then uh, you reduce this one megahertz to twelve point five kilohertz, for instance. And then at this rate, and with the event size we have, we can uh, store this. Uh, data on tape. Uh, what I wanted to show here is that uh, this is not only selecting events, because uh, at the same time you want to, to select uh, in a very efficient way, you have to make sure the cuts you apply, the requirements, the requirements you apply are, um, are calibrated, because you know the detector is, uh, sometimes the detector moves, uh, since you, you have a, a for, for, for several reasons, uh, you can cite one. For instance, you have the, the uh, a magnet that uh, you you turn on or turn off or you flip, and then when, when you do that, some parts of the magnet or some parts of the detector can move. So this is needs to be aligned. Also, the the, the sensors and the 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 the, 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 the uh, all kinds of electronics you have in the detector, they change with time uh, for, for also several reasons. And then you have to calibrate these, uh, these uh, sensors. So you have to do both alignment and calibration, and then you do that on real time. And you have to, to put this on the, on the software you're doing, right? That's a kind of uh, uh, something that, of course, enters on the equation. So at the end, what we have is a farm that uh, needs, uh, for instance, a 10 uh, uh, petabytes of, uh, of this space. And uh, what we call real time, that's also very interesting to say, is not uh, something that happens in a nanosecond or, or you know, like 25 nanoseconds or, or even milliseconds. It's something that uh, can happen in two weeks. Uh, since we are, uh, you are taking this this data can go to a buffer and as, uh, and then you you can you know make a stack and uh, of this data and then uh, keep analyzing that because you know that uh, the accelerator is running twenty four seven but it the, the 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 accelerator is also making some breaks so you use the time that the accelerator is not colliding. I mean, using the time that sometimes there are no no, no collisions uh, taking place to keep processing the data that uh, 
were not not collected, but the, the data that uh, took place maybe a few hours ago. So this data is in a buffer and it's uh, waiting to be uh, analyzed, and that's why you need a lot of disk space. So this is a uh, this plot is the disk buffer usage. You don't need you don't want to go to hundred here because hundred means that you don't then you don't have any more space to, to buffer. <laughs> But if you see, uh, uh, you you have a, a buffer that's increasing, and then you have a shut, uh, some periods of without data that where this green, uh, dark green are representing. Then the, the the disk buffer goes to zero again, and then you have this going up and down because of this. And then you see that uh, uh, this was more or less you don't. It's safe to keep at 50, 60 percent because of course this is a usage fraction. But you can have uh, many other problems than just uh, uh, using all the, the buffer. Okay. Um, so this is just to to well, this is just to say that uh, we have uh, to consider both the rate and the size of the band. So uh, and then you can be clever, and then you can reduce the size of the band. Here, that's an example on the on the right on the left. You have um, um, the kind of uh, event size you want on the bottom is you save everything that uh, you measure, and going uh, to going up, you select information to save. So if you select information to save, the event size reduces. Then you can increase the bandwidth. So that means you in, you increase the, the 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 number of events that uh, you uh, want you can save on on tape. So you can either select only the 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 uh, the, uh, the candidate plus few other information or just the candidate. That's what is in the, the top figure. So this is something that also LHB as an example. I uh, started using other experiments are also using. That's a very interesting idea. And uh, it's been, um, I think most of the experiments are, are, are somehow exploring this, uh, this idea of uh, reducing the event size, not for all events, but for some kind of events that you know that you can see. So at the end, what, what, what is the trigger or real time analysis wish list? You need a high reduction factor, which means that uh, you have a, a, a lot of data, a lot of a rate, which is 40 megahertz, and then you have to reduce that for a big factor. But at the same time, you don't want to lose any interest in any uh, events that are interesting for you. Uh, for instance, uh, dark matter, you know, production. Uh, you don't want to 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 uh, to be so on these events. Uh, also, um, for that, you need a fast decision <laughs> and also a very good resolution on this decision. So there are several challenges that I could go on here. So of course, uh, in the future, we expect higher background because you have, uh, in that you have, you have more uh, pile up, you have, you know, uh, the, 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 as I said, the luminosity peak is going to increase, and now you have more tracks to analyze. Uh, at the same time, you can have more complicated uh, event types to analyze, which is increasing the, the, both the event rate and the event size. So the bandwidth is going to be a challenge to reduce in a, in a possible way. So one possible solution is, of course, is the use of GP GPUs, and I'm going to show some examples of uh, how to use that. But first, I, I will say some words about GPUs. Um, that's really something that's amazing. I, you know, that's why, I guess, it's, uh, it's being discussed uh, in many places. I don't know. Uh, there, uh, <clears throat> there is a, this Moore prediction where uh, or every two years you have uh, the, uh, you double the transistor um, uh, contents per ship. And uh, this is, of course, uh, uh, reading <clears throat> going to a hardware that's speed 
was enough to speed up the sequential uh, program. Sequential programs means that uh, you're not parallel. You go one step depends on the on the previous step. And but you know, so as you, as you know that the this is uh, something that uh, changed completely the way that we think uh, the software since uh, the increasing of uh, uh, the since the increase of performance is also related to the clock, uh, you could uh, be faster by having a, a faster clock. But at the same time, you have a faster clock. You need you need you need more uh, voltage. You need more energy. So you have to to use in your equation how much energy you you want to use and how much fast you. you you, you want to be. So that's uh, two things that you, you keep in mind. And one, one possible way to uh, circumvent both of these things is using uh, parallel computing or high performance computing. And I'm not going to discuss here parallelisms in a general way. I'm going uh, or high performance, you know, because there are many, other, there are other ways to, to, to parallelize your software. I'm just going to discuss the GPUs. So, and uh, GPUs are very specific. Each way has a, a, its own specific, uh, uh, own specific details and own specific application, or at least. Uh, the, the way that you have to solve your problem in the software needs to be uh, thought uh, on the on the hardware you decide to use. So first GPU, of course, was a graphical <coughs> uh, processing unities. It was to process uh, gra graphs. And uh, the graphs, you, you have uh, vertex and index buffers that are for a description of, of an image, you need vertices. And uh, you connect this, but, uh, the, the, the triangles, you have triangles with uh, these vertices. <clears throat> and uh, for every vertex, you can calculate the position in screen based on this uh, original position and, uh, of course, the camera. Your point. You can get color, of course. That's uh, to, to to have a, a, a colored image, and then you can get texture. And at the end, what you have, you, you have to renderize everything in order to have an image. So on the on the on the right, you have the, the, the way that the, his GPU was uh, developed to. And then, uh, you know, the, to to keep all this uh, done in, in in the memory. But uh, how this is done in an inefficient way? You do it uh, in in you do it everything at the same time. Uh, since that's uh, nothing of this, uh, none of this. Uh, 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 its calculations are dependent. They are actually independent of each other. So this is really independent data that you can process in parallel. So images are uh, uh, a parallelized problem uh, from, from the definition. And then uh, you can uh, access the memory of, uh, simultaneously and contiguously without any problems and the bandwidth at this at this point, it will be more important than the latency that you need that you have to, uh, to process this, uh, this information. And uh, of course, what you, when you see uh, how the GPUs uh, developed over time, it was, uh, and I, I, I think that, uh, of course, there is a, a huge uh, pressure for GPUs to be better and better. And uh, one of the pressures is the scientific uh, applications of GPUs. And then you see here the, the theoretical peak that's uh, 
how uh, theoretical something you can calculate in your GPU, or if you kick a, a, a operation that you can do per second using uh, floats, but you'll um, you'll have a theoretical peak, and then you see how this is increased. Like the, I only found a, a, a graphic of 2014, but that's uh, something that uh, already shows that the, 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 the development of GPU over time. And now uh, I'm not going to discuss anymore about GPUs. I'm going to go uh, over the uh, the how the experiments can use this technology uh, in the real time analysis. So there are different experiments using or planning to use. So I'm going through them and trying to to to, to make clear what what are the, the the status of each experiment. So this uh, NA62 is a fixed target experiment, uh, XOR, and it's aimed to study uh, rare K on the K. So this is not, uh, so this is a, 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 a experiment that needs a very high, very high precision in, uh, in their measurement uh, and specific for, for for the particle identification, since the most of uh, you have pions of protons that you you have to um, to discriminate from from other particles, and uh, in 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 this experiment, uh, since the event size is not uh, big, and then you you can uh, manage to to solve the uh, the, the the, la the latency issue to, and then uh, you basically, uh, what they did was to use uh, in, the, in the first level trigger, what they call L0, they are able to use the GPU to uh, select their uh, events and they're reducing by a factor of 10, uh, the rate of, of the, of the data, and that's of course a big step because then you they can do very complicated uh, selection on real time to to select this kind of rackions, uh, rackions in case that they are studying. Actually, they uh, yeah, very nice result uh, recently. So the problem they have is that uh, when uh, they they need to reconstruct in their uh, uh, particle identification detector, uh, these uh, uh, ring shaped patterns. And the, as, as it's shown on the, on the right top. And uh, the way they, they, they do that in a soft, in a parallel, parallelized way is to use this all, all my gas. But it's a, it's a uh, it's a name and an algorithm that uh, use this relationship uh, of four points in a circle. You have four points in a circle. You can uh, you have uh, you have this uh, relation between the points, and then you can do that uh, in parallel. Uh, since uh, many of the points you 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 can do many of these uh, tests in parallel, and then you end up. Doing much better than if we're trying to do that in a sequential uh, uh, software. So this is uh, each of these points you see on the right is a photomultiplier in the, in this uh, rich detector, and then they they use these uh, signals to find the circles, and then that's uh, was done already in the uh, results. Um, here you see, uh, for instance, um, how the latents, it, uh, so they, they took the data in 2016 uh, using GPUs uh, and uh, in order to, to, to discriminate uh, uh, the particles. And uh, they, do, they can do that uh, within a millisecond, which is quite good, as I said, you don't. You would have some 
but for time to do, even if your rate is uh, 10 megahertz. And then uh, you see here uh, the, 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 the number of events uh, they, they analyze as back to the time and, uh, and for, for, for different configurations and for, diff for two, two different uh, uh, two different views how the latents uh, are done. Of course, they, they, they use the P P100 here. Um, yeah, so they, they, they go up to 2,000 events in buffer. That's what I meant. Now, in a different experiment that uh, didn't take place yet, so I'm going slower than I predicted. It's a, the mu 2 3 e uh, so this is a fixed target experiment. So this is going to take place yet, but, uh, and uh, they plan to use GPUs uh, in their in their real time analysis. So uh, here the 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 beam is a continuous uh, beam. So this is a uh, data that uh, you actually split your data in streams in 50 nanosecond slices. And uh, what they're going to, they propose to have is 12 filter FAC PCs with one GPU each. And a GPU GPU uh, can process at least uh, 1.7 million time slices per second. Uh, so there you have a kind of PC in GPUs. And um, they think that uh, using 13 GPUs, they can do all the, uh, Online selection, which is amazing, uh, since it's um, it's it's very little compared to other experiments, and probably uh, smaller farm than if you would use only PCs. The Panda experiment, which is also in, uh, in Germany, uh, it's anti protonization and uh, they they are using the the GPUs for. <clears throat> the heat the, the track reconstruction and then they have a uh, uh, different uh, software running there uh, so for instance your women track finder which is a uh, very parallelized bow and then uh, they 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 box it. everything is done on the queue and then you have a uh, hundred times uh, faster software than uh, if you would compare with a CPU version and they they can do that uh, with uh, uh, and uh, they, what uh, what they, they claim is that uh, the, the, the the overhead of this uh, copying data from uh, device to uh, to host is only seven percent of the time, which is quite good because that's something that uh, takes some time to to transfer the data from device to host. Now going to LHC experiments. And uh, of course, I'm going to discuss the four experiments. Uh, and I will start uh, with LHCB. So here I would maybe say a few words that uh, in a LHC experiment, you will have detectors. I've already said something similar, but uh, have the have detectors that are actually complex enough that you can divide them in sub detectors and uh, you the problems are very different for each subdetector, so you have to find solutions that are very different from each subdetector uh, or even each particle type. So you have here, for instance, electrons and muons. They're both charged particles. For you know muons, they they can uh, go easily through matter, and then you have a muon chamber at the end of the, the, the experiment. So it's very different from the electrons that. Uh, you have a calorimeter in a way that you can uh, both measure both photons and electrons, but the electrons, of course, you have uh, signals in the tracking, and you still have the hadrons to reconstruct. I can go back here if you have questions about how the detectors work. And uh, in the, in the, I showed LHB in the run to where there was a L0 uh, path where the this hardware uh, stage of the trigger. And now for run three, what's, which is going to take place next uh, 
or I don't know, 2022, probably only. Um, the, the data will go directly to software, no hardware trigger stage anymore. And uh, that means uh, that's a challenge. And uh, one of the ways to solve, you have a really big farm of CPUs and then you be very smart on the software to run your CPU. Or you could use GPUs and uh, finally, a couple of month, months ago, uh, we decided and approved the use of GPUs on the first uh, high level trigger. So this is going to, to reduce the 30 megahertz to one megahertz. And I'm going to, I'm going to discuss further, but uh, of course this, you take, uh, you have a disk buffer, so you have two days of disk buffer instead of two weeks in the case of run two. Um, for instance, one issue or one problem that we have in LHCB is how to reconstruct fast enough tracks in the VLO. So VLO is the vertex uh, locator detector, which is the, 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 the sub-detector closest to the beam. And then I, it, it's going to measure uh, uh, straight lines. The tracks, the particles are straight lines. There are there is no magnetic field in this in this in this region of the detector. So, but you have uh, too many straight lines. And then at the end, what to what to begin with are, are heats of these straight lines in planes. And we have twenty six planes. It's it's a silicon pixel detector. And from these twenty six planes, you have a uh, uh, several uh, 100,000 uh, 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 pixels or, or clusters. But, uh, and then you have to solve several issues here. One is the, the, the cluster find, which the, you want to find uh, the, the location of these pixels already from the raw data. So this is done also in GPUs. And uh, what, the other is how to find the best uh, straight lines that uh, connect it, uh, these, uh, these, uh, these clusters. Uh, so this is done uh, using a, a, a software in GPU in a way that is efficient and also faster than uh, CPU. So reduce, uh, so, and uh, that's uh, what proved to work. So yeah. Uh, so here I, I show, for instance, uh, that's one of the issues. There are many other problems to solve. I just and in one, <clears throat> and then you can compare uh, the kind of uh, throughput you'd have for different GPUs, and then you see, of course, the the, the, the most uh, the, the most powerful GPUs on the on the right top, and uh, and uh, there is a the th uh, that depends on the theoretical. Um, uh, here is the teraflops uh, in the x-axis. So at the end, what we are going to have is a, a, a order of uh, maybe 500 GPUs running on the HLC1, right? And uh, 250 uh, CPU servers. So this is going to run on the HLC1. Then uh, after this, uh, uh, after this part, we go to HLC2, which is CPU only. Okay. Um, and yeah, 500 of RTCs. I mean, that there are three options here you know, using 500 GPUs. In Alice, uh, Alice already used GPUs in the past, and uh, what they do, they actually they, they run as a as a farm. They run several events in parallel, so it's a kind of a CPU farm. They can do that uh, for specific. It's not actually a, Alice is is divided in different uh, experiments. So they, they do it for a specific one. And then they also have uh, some part of the software running in the queue. So they can they can do that and then it can save a lot of time and money using the queues. They already done that they use to, to run too. CMS is also planning to want uh, to use the queues, but not right now, only run three, only in the in the maybe after yeah. 2030, something like this. And uh, they already have uh, some GPUs tested during the data run to data, data, uh, data taking. Uh, they have uh, some projects 
that are very interesting. For instance, is they add a new trigger state. You have you usually have HL21, HL22. So they want a state only for track work instruction, which is kind of interesting because that's one of the paths that takes a lot of most of the time. So they they maybe want to do that. That's uh, something to 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 follow to to, to follow the, the the development. And after I, I would say after the CMS they are in the same uh, level. They they have demonstrators. Atlas actually have a had a demonstrator in run one a longer time ago, 2012. They they show that they, it's possible to run. They they they, they were able to run, of course, but then uh, they, they need to decide how to do it. And then they know they have to solve several issues. For instance, they have a CPU resources that they, they, they plan to have and uh, the, the needs of resources. So you see that up to run three is okay, but run four is, I said, it's maybe 10 years from now, they, um, they need to do something because CPU is not going to be an option. The same of storage. So both CPU and storage, they need to solve this issue. And uh, they have a demonstrator that, uh, for instance, uh, using GPUs instead of CPUs, they can get uh, time uh, of track reconstruction much faster than CPU only. OK, so this is a table that uh, summarizes uh, the experiment I showed, maybe Atlas is missing here. This table that's a very general, uh, very good uh, general overview from Dorotea. That's actually part of LHCB. Um, and she gave a talk about that. Uh, I'm going to say a few words about that since I'm not, I didn't, uh, not working on this. And I also uh, don't know many details. I know that uh, uh, GPUs are being used many, many uh, offline, as I said, uh, analysis simulation here, say I should have put offline analysis. Uh, for instance, Goofit, which is actually someone from Brazil working, uh, Alberto, and uh, to, to fit uh, these distributions or this analy wave analysis, they are partial wave analysis, they are very uh, complicated to fit. The fit process it takes a lot of time. So they have this uh, GPU, uh, way to do it. So you will see uh, uh, the time depending on the CUDA cores you have uh, used. And of course, there are and uh, here the, the Giant 5 project. And Giant is a very used tool for simulation in high energy feed experiments. Also, some uh, uh, also outside high energy feed, it's, it's been used other places like um, medical physics. And uh, this is uh, being, uh, being developed uh, for the future where Giant 5 could run in GPUs. And uh, that's for sure going to improve a lot. The time of this, this, uh, this software, which is a very heavy uh, software. Uh, if, you, if, you know, uh, if you know Giant, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, finally, I hope that I showed, uh, I convinced you that uh, GPUs are needed, not only a solar, but uh, they are solution that we need for high net physics experiments. Uh, so some systems are already running and ran, I think they were running or ran in the past. And uh, there are many, many to be to run in the future. Uh, so real time is, is a very good uh, solution. Uh, while there are other uh, solutions I didn't cover, and also other experiments that are probably I didn't cover here, but I I think that's uh, yeah I think that's fair to say that the experiments I showed are ready enough to, to prove the point. So thank you for the attention. Thank you so much, Murilo. Indeed, very interesting talk. Uh, we have a couple of questions. Um, I would like to start actually. So as you said, we are in the, the LHC experiment. We are now preparing for the round three uh, data taking era. And uh, experiments are now including more and more GPU for, for real-time analysis and all of that. 
with this new era, era that we have a lot of data that indeed is more challenging for the analysts, do you think that having GPU in the universities or institution will be more a requirement of, uh, than just a, an option like it is right now? I, yeah, I think that's a requirement for, for training. Uh, we, for instance, we, I, we started this uh, project uh, six years ago, I would say, 2014. In, uh, in our institute and we of course uh, now we know much more than uh, six years ago uh, not only our group but uh, also let's say the, the community uh, but we learn a lot when you have uh, locally the GPU that uh, you can do whatever you want right because uh, of course if you are part of a big experiment like LACB and you want to, to, to use the GPUs, the, the, you, can, you can ask and then you can use the GPUs they have there, but you cannot really change or you cannot uh, change configurations or you cannot learn uh, maybe some details that uh, you could learn if you have uh, a GPU in, in, your, in your department, in your institute. So I think it's uh, very useful to have uh, uh, in, uh, GPU uh, in, in your institute, uh, at least to to run some tests and um, and learn uh, and and train train for uh, is train students. You know, it's not so easy. So I mean, of course, uh, usually when we want to expect from students that finished uh, physics graduate on the graduation is that uh, he knows Python or, or C++ or sometimes uh, if, if, if he already did something in high net physics uh, high, uh, yeah high net uh, uh, physics, physics experiments some route but GPUs is very different so it's good to have uh, in your institute to train yes indeed indeed and we actually planning to have a fair GPU so we're in that process. So we have a, a, a couple of questions. I'm going to read it in Spanish first and then in English or Portuguese. Um, muchas gracias por esta tan buena plática. Esta es una pregunta general. Eh, ¿Podría mencionar un poco más acerca de la siguiente generación de colisionadores como el que China está planeando construir? So uh, thank you very much for this I, nice I talk. Think I don't know, Mr. <laughs> <Emilia. laughs> I think I understood the question. It's about okay, the, okay. The, the next, I, I understand your Spanish very well. I, it was very clear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I cannot speak, and I and I'm sorry for that. <laughs> but no, 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 don't worry. Um, so the next, so he, she. Uh, that's a. Some a question that actually uh, it's outside of the, the scope, and I. But I, what I can say, I I, sh I put this slide because that's where I it's showing the, the next uh, generation uh, experiments, right? And uh, the the China. Uh, so the inter the what the, what I think should should uh, is, is uh, the question is saying about China is the, uh, the international linear collider, and. Um, and this is, as far as I know, it's not uh, clear if it's going to be in China or not. I, I don't have any uh, information and I'm not following very closely. I just know, and I, I, and I think that's something very interesting, that uh, there is a, a collider that's being, that's being approved to run um, in the United States. That's not here, actually. It's, that's, I think it's funny because it should be there, it, the, which is the um, what they call uh, electron ion collider or something, or something like this. So this is approved, but it's not here. And uh, there are, I think, the before the China collider, probably at least CERN is going to. I mean, there is a chance that CERN is also doing this. Uh, uh, at a uh, larger collider, what they call FCC. I guess that's what's uh, being adopted. 
I don't know if uh, if if somebody wants to say more because I I don't know the details anymore about. Uh, but I, it's nothing is certain for these uh, next colliders. That's that's clear. Okay. Okay. So the next question is, uh, well, in Spanish. Um, ¿Existen ideas más allá de la tecnología de aceleradores que pudieran ayudar en las medidas de procesos de en, 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 en altas energías, en física de altas energías, con gran precisión? Es decir, ¿necesitamos construir aceleradores más grandes y más grandes o mayores y mayores? en orden de entender la naturaleza en escala de Planck o para encontrar eh, nuevas eh, signaturas de nueva física en el standard model. Yeah, eh, sí, I, I think I understood. Thank you for, for the very clear Spanish. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, I think it's related to, to the previous question. And I, I think this also this is like also showing. And um, from my understanding, I think the question, I mean, it's maybe just confirm uh, it's about if there is a new technology that uh, could uh, reduce the size of the, the accelerator. That's more or less. Yes, it's, it's like, do we need to build bigger and bigger accelerators? It's a controversial question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, From my point of view, right now there is no other way than uh, than go further than uh, build a large accelerator at this point. So let's say the the, the now we have uh, I don't know I I don't know the number. We have 20, LHC is 27 kilometers uh, as uh, for for the you know for the side of the the circle and. Uh, I think we're talking about uh, maybe increasing by a factor of three, something like this. Also, the linear collider is uh, by a factor of three. So I, for the near future, I guess that's the way to go. There is no one. And, um, and uh, there is no, uh, as far as I know, there is no new technology that uh, could uh, decrease the size of the experiment. But uh, as, I, as I think, uh, My, my opinion, so maybe just to be very, very, very clear. My opinion is that we should keep trying measuring things, right? So if you wanted to go bigger, it's going, I don't know, smaller, maybe higher intensity. So you see that uh, here there is peak luminosity, which is not usually a bigger experiment. So on, on, the, on the right, on the right plot, Uh, higher energy usually means bigger accelerators, right? So that you see LHC here on the on the right, and then uh, and then you have uh, other experiments here on the other possible experiments on the right and uh, on, on the top. And uh, on the left is not usually uh, bigger because here you have peak luminosity is more data. Then you have experiments like uh, this. Uh, K, K, E, K, B, which is not big, but they are very intense uh, beams. So I think that's a, also that's a possibility that is being already being explored. But uh, from my point of view, I guess in the near future, and in the near future, I don't have here the plot for, for the, it's really decades. So we have decades of maybe building a bigger experiment, and then um, we hopefully by then we learn more from the particle physics, right? And, uh, that's important that we maybe we know wh where to look because at this point we don't know exactly where to look. And also from technology, technology point of view. And then uh, applying technology, we can build a smaller experiment. But that's, uh, that's, something, that's, that's something that we have to, to discuss in a, We, I mean, the, the numbers are, are very, very big. So it's, 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 I don't think it's a problem. And I, we, should, uh, we should work with that, right? That's something we, we have to work with. <laughs> yes, that's right. 
Yes, uh, we have a next question. Uh, I'm going to read it in English, actually. At the beginning of your talk, you mentioned about high energy physics software and investment. It is usually misunderstood that high energy physics theory or experiments or fundamental physics in general do not contribute directly or in short times in the society. Could you please comment a little bit about some direct application in the so-called real life that has its root in high energy physics research, specifically at CERN? Yes, that's a very good question. And uh, I think I'm going to use uh, one of my, uh, yeah. So, this is, so there are many applications I could mention also the, even the, the, the World Web, uh, World Wide Web, the, the WWW that was uh, developed uh, in, at CERN by CERN uh, employees. Uh, but uh, related to, for instance, to the talk of this, of this uh, seminar, I, could, I would, I would uh, say that uh, this, first, this is one of the tools that were developed for uh, detectors. So because since we have a very complicated detectors and then you wanted to, to understand how the, all, the, all these particles that are produced, how they interact with the detector, how they are going to uh, uh, leave signals in, in our detectors. So there is a, this a, a big uh, toolkit that uh, contains a lot of data how uh, the, 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 the radiation, let's say, in general, interacts with matter. And uh, this toolkit uh, is being used a lot in, uh, in medical applications. Uh, I, I, I even think that uh, what this is, this, this, uh, because this is an official uh, picture of the Jean Paul, and uh, I'm pretty sure this is a medical uh, room where you could use uh, this tool to simulate how the radiation is going to, to how the radiation is going to interact with matter in your, in your, in your room or, or with the body. And then you can fine tune or you can prepare better the, the, the medical uh, facilities or you can, or you can um, uh, make a, a better equipment to find, uh, you know, to, to to treat better people using radiation. So I think this is, a, this is one very nice application that uh, what is possible because of the high net physics uh, uh, needs that uh, and that now it gets applied to, to, to real. And there are many others, I, I, I mean, not, not only related to computing, but also related to, to particle detectors, also to medical applications, but also to other, uh, other applications like food treatment and uh, maybe security as well, since uh, you, can, you, could track, uh, you could track weapons, you know, using that. So there are many other applications and um, I, I just cite one, uh, but there are many. I, and, and, and maybe I should say that uh, if you, if you, yeah, if you search for on the web, and if you go to certain website, or if you search on the web, for sure you will find. But at, at certain website, they, they show they have this uh, website uh, specific for uh, applications, which is very important for certain since it, people usually think it's a lot of money that I mean you put on the on the on the lab, so it, that's a way to answer the society. That's okay. We are, of course, we are understanding uh, nature, and understanding the nature itself, it's already something very important for society. But sometimes it's it's very uh, very hard to, to to prove that. I mean, very hard to, to convince people that. Even if you have many examples, you know, like uh, maybe, uh, like uh, electromagnetism at the beginning was something that you do with, without any application. Uh, so even if it's already important, we prove that there are other important things that are already uh, short-term 
they are already uh, being applied for, for the society. And of course, the knowledge of nature is going to be applied long term, and then we cannot uh, predict how, but uh, we know that we are going to use this knowledge in the future. Yes, yes, thank you so much. Indeed, you said it very clearly, you know, the, the importance to communicate to society what are the, the retribution that uh, be, they come from the laboratories. So we have another question uh, here in the chat uh, from Oscar. When you are doing the data analysis, what kind of techniques do you use for the data processing considering the capacity of GPU? Are the same as usual techniques? Let me think, um, because, okay, so I think uh, he's talking about the data analysis uh, using GPUs, right? And uh, let me... Use Cuda. <laughs> Cuda. No, because I add, so what, it depends what, what I mean. There are, there are the data analysis that, uh, that, we, that we do. Uh, uh, to, to compare with uh, the, the phenomenological model and, you know, have, and there are, if you want to do this, what they call real-time analysis that involves a lot of uh, uh, reconstruction, alignment, calibration, and uh, in a way it's uh, similar because you are using maybe the same language and so on. Uh, if you are talking about GPUs, then it's different because you you want using CUDA. So uh, unless you use CUDA also for offline offline analysis, but uh, in general, and maybe that's what the question is about. We do not. Uh, I mean, we use many tools that are already existing, and uh, the the. The problem is how to to use this tool in your problem. So you see it. So I, I, as I mentioned here, sorry, I, I may go back here one example. Um, uh, so this uh, algorithm here, which is already known, uh, and I, I think it, this is our algorithm was first used or first developed for um, for the uh, astronomy. For astronomy, astronomy problems that uh, for, the, for the telescopes and some things like this. So this is something that uh, it's already there, it's already known. But how to how do you use this uh, method in your problem? That's something, of course, never something new. So and uh, maybe that uh, I, I don't have an example. Maybe that a new method that was never used before comes to is is uh is developed but the, from from the methods i know and there are very different methods very i mean this one for instance as an example there is there are other methods uh like uh, automata uh analysis and that are already they're already known they're already being used in other applications and then you are trying to use in your application and that's a, already a big challenge that's, that's, I don't know if that was the question, but I hope that. Okay, thank you. And we have the last question. Okay, I, I put it here in the chat. I'm going to read it in Spanish. Um, is la tecnología de Feynman eh, suficiente para computar todos los observables físicos necesarios para explicar la gran enorme cantidad de datos que son colectados por los eh, detectores de partícula? Es la primera pregunta. O la comunidad experimental está esperando por eh, eh, el input teórico, ¿verdad? la comunidad teórica, que permita los cálculos eh, con mejores precisiones de las secciones de choque de procesos más realísticos. <risa> Yeah, the shoe. Uh, sorry. Uh, so that's a very, very deep question um, about uh, the way we understand the nature and the way we test nature. 
So the way what we understand, one of the ways we understand is the, the, the Feynman uh, calculations and now part which is coming from the, <clears throat> from the quantum field theory. And, uh, and this, uh, I think it, it's not fair to say that, uh, so this is, um, of course, this is a way to, to predict what we are going to measure. But it, that's not the only. Uh, it's I mean it's not a, it's not something that uh, we have to yeah we have to 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 be clear. That's not something that was thought maybe at the end of the 19th century, where uh, before quantum mechanics, where maybe there was an idea that uh, everything is known, so we just need to, to calculate more. I don't think we are, we are at this point that, of course, ah, we have Feynman calculation and the only problem is now to calculate all the orders of, uh, you know, because that's a perturbation theory and so on. So I don't think that's the, the issue. Of course, we, as, as further we measure, so if, if you have a process that you can calculate and I, in perturbation theory using Feynman, and then uh, you, you, you calculate to measure. Sometimes your measurement is, is pre more precise than the calculation because it's, the calculation is a, you have to calculate many orders. So you force the theories to keep calculating more diagrams and so on. And then if the, the theories have something more precise, then you, your measurement have to, has to go more precise. And then what, and then what you expect is that if they don't match, then you must have a new, new, new path for there. Maybe, maybe a new, new phenomena that was not predicted. So, at some sense, if the question, uh, if the question is about um, this waiting, I don't think nobody is waiting. So everybody is doing the best, and uh, some in some cases. Uh, there is a pressure on the theorists. Some cases, some cases, there is a pressure on the experimentalists. But this is when you can calculate with uh, with with Feynman technology. As, uh, as, so Feynman is is not so this technology. This technology is not enough to compute all the physics, for example. And because sometimes you read for its problems with too many bodies, or the the coupling is is not weak. Uh, you have uh, you have uh, you know uh, what we call usually we call a uh, uh, non-linear or maybe non-perturbative physics. So then uh, you have no way to calculate. I mean, you have other ways. Of course, you have uh, some people even use. Uh, uh, if there are some ideas to use uh, string theory technology to to calculate non-perturbative uh, processes. And that's nothing to do with Feynman, for instance. And you can try that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Why does it work? Yeah, we don't know. I mean, maybe there is something behind the way you do it. How to, to you know, the number of colors and the number of, I mean. So there are, there are many things that are, cannot, cannot be calculated with, uh, with, with this technology. But even the things where that are calculated, nobody's waiting, I think. It, we are always pushing in order to have uh, to find the, 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 the truth, to find the, the, the best knowledge of, of nature. Um, I, hope, I hope that was clear. Yes, for sure. Muchas gracias, Murilo. Ha sido excelente, eh, muy claro todo y responder todas las preguntas. Es, ha sido un gran placer tenerlo en esta jornada científica. Esperamos contar con su apoyo para futuros eventos eh, pues, organizados por la Escuela de Física. Y pues, eh, thank you so much. Eh, no me queda más que recordarles que tenemos las últimas dos sesiones de la tarde de esta jornada. Tenemos eh, a las dos de la tarde la participación del de, eh, doctor Edison Montoya, computación de alto desempeño y sus aplicaciones Big Data, Computación Distribuida e Inteligencia Artificial. Y eh, la última charla será de Rafael Sarmiento, Investigación en, en Espectroscopía de un Plasma Producido por Láser, LPPS, en el GEO. 
soporte instrumental y computacional. Entonces, muchas gracias a todos por estar siguiendo esta transmisión y eh, nos vemos dentro de poco a las dos. Que estén bien.